Hello everybody, I am Gary Tice, and welcome to a, another D&D campaign diary. Over the weekend we played D&D, &D. the cat says hello. I stream, I did my campaign Saturday, which I always do, 1 to whenever. I've been, I left it at 4 p.m. this time. Uh, due to the fact that I had another game I was playing around uh, 10 30 at night and session went well I like the fact that uh, as you know I have been saying that my campaign revolves around Dark Souls and from this point on the gloves are off I've already stated that they're high enough level to potentially take on some of these, uh, 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 events that are going on, that are happening, and they're going to start seeing the evolution of how I started from one area all the way up to where they are. They made their way to Ethereal after defeating the High Lord Warner, and boy were they as surprised but when the, uh, the pompous the pompous knights uh, surrounded them, <laughs> there goes the camera, and and gave them quite a scare. They decided to take off, uh, and they fought a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to probably have to pull down some of the still pull down some of the health of each uh, creature. Um, didn't really go out <laughs> as I planned it. I, I just, it was that one moment where, you know what? Let's see what they can handle from Dark Souls. And that was not it. But then again, Ethereal is my end game. So they did enter the end game. I gave them the chance to enter the end game, and I'm glad I didn't put them against the uh, that lizard creature thing that ends up in the bridge because they were on the bridge. In Dark Souls Three, there's that bridge to Ethereal, and what normally would happen is the croc that crocodile thing would jump down from being invisible, being from being visible, invisible to being visible, and it would start attacking you. However, I'm I rolled for that. Uh, well, well, what encounter would they have at when they enter Ethereal at this point? And I'm glad I, I pushed that. I'm glad that that didn't show up on the die. So I everything I do, even though this is a Dark Souls story-driven type game, I, I let the dice say what's going to happen. Because eventually the dice is going to put them up against something that they won't be able to handle, and it did. And, you know, I mean, I have all this stuff ready every single uh, week, and I got it all written down, I got it all written out, I got all the stats, I got all everything written out. But as soon as I check, well, what are my guns roll to see what they're going to, are going to face during this encounter... Is over, and a couple prophets knights, I think four, and uh, just to show them, hey, there's things coming. Still, there's things still walking amok in ethereal. So I definitely feel like the end game will feel more like a Souls-like game, depending on which Souls-like they go to, because they have their choices. They either can go. It seems like to me they're going towards ethereal. Instead of uh, the other, other, I had two types of endgame. You have uh, a Bloodborne endgame or uh, a Dark Souls endgame. It seems to me like they're going towards the Dark Souls endgame. Because I do have Central Yarnum, I do have Old Yarnum, I do have Bergenworth, I do Kanehurst as it, its own little uh, country, and I made it like that they love Kanehurst, and I made Kanehurst. Completely different because uh, in the next video that you see of the evolution of uh, 
my games, you'll understand why I I I I changed Kane Hurst into what it was, and because and I'll let you all see that one later on today. Stay tuned. But they had their choice. They could either go to um to the Bloodborne area or the Souls area. They decided to go to the Souls area. So and they could change their mind. They could go to Central Yardum uh, next section and try out there. See, I made it so that things are in motion. Bloodborne has its own little thing going on, the Bloodborne area, and the Souls area it has its own thing going on. At some point, there there's a crossroads. They're going to have to either go one way or go the other. I mean, I'm not trying to railroad it this way. I'm just saying this is... I mean, it's not going to... It, this is the only way you can make it happen. If you're going to make a Soulsborne type of campaign, you're either, either going to end in Bloodborne or you're going to end in Dark Souls. It's not like they don't have the choices. They could go either way. They can do... They could try to do both. Um, it's... It's plausible. And like I said, they can do whatever they want. I tell them all the time, you guys do whatever you want. You guys can go wherever you want. Go, make a decision, though. You got to know. I got to know where you guys are going before next session so I can have things ready for you. But as long as you tell me where you're going I, I, and I have time to get it ready, wow, it's fine. So... Next session will be a pretty good session. Uh, I think they're going to reevaluate what they can do. Um, and it wasn't like I was aiming to do anything malicious as I put those bad guys there. That's just what would have been there. Like I said, it, it was the end game area. And I think they're going to try something a little different maybe go somewhere else for a bit get a little stronger fight some bosses because i told them you guys gotta fight more bosses uh but they are level 10 and by the time they get level 15 to 16 they should be able to go back in ethereal which would be pretty much the level that they should be fighting that area. Right, kitty? <laughs> the cat thinks uh, they should be fighting it when whenever the whenever the cat feels like they should be fighting it. Anyway, with that being said, after the event went on, they went back to their tavern. They uh, talked a bit. There was a little bit of dialogue there in between NPCs and the players characters which is always a fun time and you know things went quite well this session and I'm glad that my players are having fun with it uh, they were a little sad that I had to end it short but you know I I've been trying to save my voice for a campaign that I'm uh, in at 10:30. It's a Western campaign. It's pretty bad. It's pretty, uh, not bad. It's pretty, uh, it's uh, nice. It's nice. I was trying to say a word that it's not YouTube friendly. So it's pretty, it's a great campaign that I'm playing in. So I do have other campaigns I'm playing in. And, you know, I just love playing Dungeons and Dragons. I love running games. It's uh, something I'm into. It's something that's great. And it's, expect more of it on the channel as uh, my evolution video will be coming up shortly. Stay tuned. We've got a lot uh, to talk about as we dive into my next uh, video. And uh, I hit the like button if you like this video and you like what I'm uh, trying to do with the channel and the direction I'm going into, uh, subscribe and well, one, eventually you're going to have to hit that notification bell. It's there. It's a YouTube thing now. 
and I might be streaming some stuff in uh, on Halloween, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, see you later.